Welcome once again to the complete free flutter course presented by yours truly, Ovidus Mazurum. Now, in the last video, we spoke about the problem with stateful and stateless widgets, and I forgot to show you the final results. So I had broken my app, and now I've refreshed it to show that I have fixed it again, but it's not doing things quite the correct way. You know, it's not uh, actually navigating to a different screen because we haven't done navigation yet. So that's what we're gonna do in this in this video. We're gonna take a quick look at navigation and how to do that. If you are joining us for the first time, don't worry, you don't need to go through the entire project to understand navigation. It's uh, kind of its own concept, which is why I made its own video. So what we're gonna do for navigation is, and I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna to go to my main.dart and my main.dart has material app. And the same way our material app has theme data, our material app also has information about navigation. Specifically, what I'm looking for here is uh, <laughs> routes here. I couldn't find it for a second. And routes, if we look, takes a map of strings and widget functions, which have build context. Okay. That's a little bit confusing, but let's not worry about it too much. For now, all we need to know is since it's a, a map, it's going to have the open and close curly braces, and then it's going to take a string. This string is the the route name. It's what tells us where to go. And what I'm going to do is inside each of my screens here, inside my stateful widget. I'm gonna make a static const route name equals, and then I'll have a string with the appropriate route name. So here I can use stopwatch, and actually I'll use slash stopwatch a dash screen. And you might think it's a bit weird for me to use a slash and also a dash over here. Uh, normally in Flutter we wouldn't use slashes or dashes, so what's going on? Well, essentially I'm making it easy to transfer to a web environment. You can imagine that if we were on web, I would want this to be the ending of my URL. And this is the web format. Of course, in this video, uh, in this project, we're not uploading to the web, but we're just making it nice and easy for ourselves in the future. Okay, and once we have this, I'm actually just gonna copy paste it into my timer screen and I'm gonna change this to timer. And I can have the same name, route name, but keep in mind that the one from stopwatch, timer, and option screen are going to be different variables, and you'll see why in a second. Option screen, here. Uh, and also you'll notice here we're using a static. The static keyword, I was hoping there'll be a pop-up, but there isn't. A static just says that it's a single value for the entire class, so the stopwatch screen. So and this should really be option screen. So apparently I haven't changed these and I'm gonna actually undo that and hit F12 options screen. By renaming it this way, it's gonna rename all of it for me. So I forgot to do that last time and that means I forgot to do it here as well. Timer screen here. I remember to update the, uh, the text in the sense but that was it. Because I think I did, I did, yeah. Okay, so the static, what this says is I'm gonna have a single value for every single instance of option screen. No, ma no matter which, how many instances of option screen I have, it's always gonna have the same value. This is never gonna change. So I have that. And then now that I have my route names, I'm gonna go back to my main.dart and use stopwatch screen, and actually this is bothering me, I'm gonna put a comma here to get rid of this error. Stopwatch screen dot route name. So of course, what this is doing is going to my stopwatch screen, and they're getting my static uh, variable route name here. And I'm gonna put this equal to, and actually this shouldn't be an equal sign, this should be a, uh, a colon, because I'm inside a map. And then this is gonna be a function which takes my build context context as an input. And we can see that here, function build context. 
and it's going to return whatever screen I'm creating. So in this case, it's stopwatch screen. And I'm gonna put a comma here. And the same thing for timer screen or route name. It's gonna be a context and timer screen. This is currently giving me an error because I haven't imported it yet, but I'll do it now. And the same for options screen context. And that one has just imported it for me. And that's gonna make an option screen there. Okay, so now I've put the routes into my material app data. So as a result, I can use this in the navigation. And by the way, I didn't have to go through the routes. I could also leave out this step and it would have looked a bit different. But actually I'll show you guys what I mean in just a second, a bit later. Okay, so now on my on tap, I have my widget call back here, but now instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is actually navigate. So I'm gonna say navigator dot of context dot, and I have a few different options here. I'm gonna use push named. And then let's check what my push name takes. It takes a route name and it has optional arguments. But in this case, the only thing I need is my route name. So I'll use stopwatch screen route name. And of course, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, but Avidius, you've just done this for every single index. And you're correct. I'll just show you how to do it. So what we should really do is have a switch statement here. And we could also use a if else multiple times. But I'm going to have the switch. And the item I'm going to put inside these brackets here is my IND, my index. And if you guys haven't seen this before, what a switch statement does, it's like a combination of if else's. It's like if something equals something, um, it's something like if int equals zero, then do something, else if int equals one, then do something, else if int, and so on. So I'm comparing the same variable against multiple values. Well, this is quite a lot of code. So one way that we can simplify this is by using switch statements. Switch index, and then, so this is the variable we're comparing, and then the different cases. In the first case, it's gonna be case zero. In case zero, that's gonna be the stopwatch screen. I'm going to navigate here, and then I'm gonna have my break afterwards. If I don't have my break, it's gonna keep propagating down through the rest of the cases. So it will do case one, uh, case zero, then case one, then case two, and then the default case, which is not what I want. Then I'm gonna have my case one, which is gonna be basically the same thing, except instead of going to um, to my stopwatch screen, I'm gonna go to my timer screen here, which needs to be imported. And why is this giving me an error? Yeah, yeah, because I haven't finished it, that's why. And then I'm gonna have a break here, and then, so I'm actually gonna give it uh, case two. I wouldn't necessarily need to because I could just have that as the default, but I prefer the default being my stopwatch screen. Uh, now, realistically, there's no real uh, chance of me falling into the, uh, the default. <laughs> trying to speak and code at the same time, but it's not working. Uh, option screen, does route name. And of course, I haven't imported option screen. So control click, control shift B, fix imports, fix three of them. I didn't even have to see what it did, but we can see up here. Okay, and again, it's giving me an error because I haven't ended in a break. So I'm going to do that and refresh it. And this should work, but let's see what happens. It okay, so I think my error is because I forgot to fill out my defaults. So I'm just gonna make my default go to stopwatch screen. And again, there should be no way of actually getting to the default, but just in case. Okay, so the reason I'm getting this error is because my different screens. So it's because I did the, I made the screens in an awkward way to demonstrate the problem with state. My different screens, time screen, option screen, and stopwatch screen, all need to take these two items, screen index and set index callback. Yeah, so I should actually be updating it here, not here. So 
So this is going to go here and here and here. This is exactly why we're using the routes here to simplify things. And then this can be empty. I don't need the args. Refresh, and that should have fixed it. Yeah, so that was exactly it. However, it's not updating my... Uh, it's not showing the correct one here. And that is because I uh, commented this out when I was trying to debug my code. But now when I put that back, you can see it is working correctly. Another quick thing I'm going to do here is currently by using push named, I'm putting a new screen on top. I'm creating a stack. And if I use back, it's going to go back the exact same way. But actually, because I'm using a bottom nav bar, I don't necessarily want to have this kind of behavior. I think it's a little bit weird. So what I want to do instead is replace the screen. And I can do that by using push named. And I think it's called push replacement named. There we go. So this is basically the same as the previous one. The difference is that it replaces it. So I'm going to go to my timer screen, my settings screen. Now if I go to back, well, it's still working because I haven't uh, reloaded everything. I'm going to rebuild it. And I'll edit out the weight for the rebuild. Okay, so I've just rebuilt it. And now if we use the back screen, we can see the back screen is going to, uh, the back button is going to close everything rather than, uh, rather than, you know, uh, going back on the stack because I don't, again, in this specific project, I don't really think it makes sense to have a stack in that way. I don't want that kind of behavior, so I'm not going to do it. So I did mention that the main purpose of this video is actually to focus on navigation rather than the different state things. So I do want to show, and I broke something apparently, I'll fix that afterwards. Uh, so I do want to show a different way of, um, a different way of navigating. So this is the, the better way, the preferred way, using the named parameters, the named routes here inside my theme data, uh, inside my material app, but it's not the only way. The, the different, more basic way, I guess you could say, would be to use navigator of context and actually build the um, build the the routes in here. So I could use push, or in this case, push replacements because I want to actually replace it. And this would take a context and go to material route. And okay, I made a small mistake again. So this is context here. And then here it's just going to be a comma and material route, and it should be material page routes. You guys can see I don't use this very often at all. And then material page routes has a builder which has the context and the option screen here. And then I'm going to need to pass in the index, which in this case is going to be IND. And it doesn't take an index. Take like screen index. And then it's also going to take the something going here. Uh, it's going to take the callback. And I call the callback set index callback. I think that was widget callback. There we go. Okay, and it's giving me an error because it does not need this context. Again, you guys can see I really don't use this way of navigating often at all. Uh, it's a lot messier. You can see I have to build the, well, I need to build this thing right here. And on top of being messier, I'd have to either copy paste or rewrite this code multiple times every single time I want to do navigation. So I definitely wouldn't do that. You've heard me repeat over and over again. If your code is being reused, just create it separately so you don't have to reuse it. That's why much better way of doing it is create your routes here and then just use your navigator of context 
dots. And in this case, I'm using push replacements, but normally you'd use uh, just push named and then the name of your routes. I mean, look at this much code versus this much code. There's really no comparison, but I actually am going to leave it in simply so that it's on the GitHub. So you guys have a reference to both of them. And I'm just going to demonstrate it works by restarting and just clicking on the different things. So stopwatch goes to stopwatch screen, timer goes to timer screen, and the settings goes to the option screen. Okay, gentlemen, so there you have it. In the next video, we're going to refactor our code to look at the state and use a state management solution. So we're going to try to pull out the state and stop doing the really awkward thing where I'm passing down all these values everywhere for no reason. And yeah, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are as well. But for now, myself, Avidius, I'm out.